If you're looking to break into the world of sports analysis, you're probably gonna to need to get to grips with some data analysis and kind of understand things like Tableau, Python, and R. Now, I did have this video already planned out, but I did delay it as I did do an industry chat video with Liam Henshaw. In that video, we spoke about how we got started, posting content online, and the different tools and languages that are available to use. That video is linked down in the description below, but it is an hour long, so for anyone that can't be bothered or too lazy to watch the full thing, I thought I'd do another video just to kind of condense it down, but also give a bit more of my input too. So before we get started, I do want to clarify that from this sort of video, I'm not saying that everyone needs to be an absolute expert data analyst, you know, it's not practical to just kind of go from nothing all the way to being a master. But what I will say is that if you are looking to stand out when applying for jobs, even just having a basic understanding of some of these things is going to set you kind of aside from, from the other people that are going for the same job. So, you know, you haven't got to go all in on this. If you just want to kind of dip your toe in, see what it's all about, learn a few of the skills, it might actually mean that when you do that, you do want to continue learning more, but I think just having a basic understanding is a massive, massive help. Okay, if I was wanting to get started in data analytics, then I'd be looking to begin immersing myself into the community. So by that, I mean, you could read some books, you can do some online research, and you can start following and connecting with people on the likes of Twitter and LinkedIn. The Twitter community was mentioned a lot in my chat with Liam, so I think that's testament to how useful that can be. So I do really advise that is a great place to get started. There's loads of people out there that are, you know, keen analysts and they, they just love what they do and they're sharing great things on Twitter. Um, a lot of them have their own blogs and things like that. So I think that's a great place to start just to kind of see, first off, what kind of things are already being done. Um, you can maybe start to see trends on how things are changing over time. Um, and that's going to give you inspiration as well. So if you'll see something, you know, if you see something that you like, I'm not saying go ahead and just copy it, but you can take inspiration from that to maybe create something similar for, for yourself. So um, I think there's lots of cool people out there. And again, Liam did mention that there was a list along of his army did say. So get yourself on Twitter, start immersing, start connecting and following um, and get integrated with, with the kind of things that are on there. And like I say, there's loads of books that you can read. There's other podcasts as well. Um, and just basically just do some research online. If reading is your thing, then three popular books that come up in the discussion of data analytics include Soconomics, um, Football Hackers, The Science and Art of Data Revolution, and The Expected Goals Theory. All of those books I will link below, um, so if you do want to check them out, feel free to do after the video. You've probably all noticed that Expected Goals, for example, is even shown now on the likes of Match of the Day as it becomes more and more mainstream. Okay, before I move on, I do just want to quickly say that I am by no means an expert in the world of data analytics. So the contents of this video basically come from my general research, my opinions, but also chats from people a lot more intelligent than me in this field. However, I think if you apply the knowledge and combine it with an actual desire to learn, then you really, really should be able to get started, at least with the basics. One thing that was mentioned was to start using Tableau Public. So I think the reason for this is because apparently it is kind of easy-ish to use. It's quite intuitive, so it's easy to pick up for the complete novice. And there are lots of kind of tutorials and resources out there online to help you get started. From using this, you should start to be able to create some simple scatter graphs and bar charts just to kind of whet your appetite. I think by starting and even just doing something very, very basic is going to be a you know, it's going to be a big psychological win. I think a lot of it is just getting started. And I think the, the whole term of data analytics and, and visualizations, it sounds very complicated and it is difficult, of course, but I think a lot of the times people are just put off by being overwhelmed maybe um, and just being a bit scared to actually start. So if you are able to, you know, get the first steps done and just start creating some simple things, I think that's going to give yourself more confidence to then push on and create much, much more. Like anything, practice makes perfect. So the more time you put in and, and practice with these different skills, the more you're gonna be able to achieve. The next thing I will say is to find a niche and also understand why you want these skills and which direction you wanna go on in your career, basically. So the whole thing of finding a niche was mentioned by Liam in the industry chat that we did, but it was also brought up in a recent Q&A video that I did also. So I think it is important not to kind of just do the same thing as everybody else. I think if you are able to kind of be creative and do something that is different, um, Obviously, it's got to be a niche that's kind of other people are going to actually find an interesting because there's no point in doing something so no one's ever going to look at it. But there's, there's plenty of things out there. So I think Liam mentioned something along the lines of um, all Scottish players playing in Italy, for example, or all left backs under a certain age. So you can kind of niche down into what interests you um, and start basically producing content on, on that. 
In terms of where you want these skills to kind of take and mold your career, that's entirely up to you. So like I kind of mentioned, you can just learn the basics just so you know you've got a basic understanding and that's enough to get you by. But there's obviously always some actual data positions that clubs will kind of hire for as well. So, But I think it is important to know that the data jobs that are available these days aren't just in clubs. So you have organ- you have actually stats companies that hire kind of data scientists. You have um, clubs, obviously, you also have things like content creators and, and kind of um, magazines and things that will, will want pieces doing on certain players. So these kind of jobs can be done on a freelance basis, a contractor basis. So there's lots of different avenues. So having these skills can open many doors. In terms of getting started with data, I have been recommended FB Ref. So this is a website, which again, I will link below and it has data. It's all free as well, by the way, data on the top five European leagues. So that can be a great place to get started. So again, you've got that for free. You've got the Tableau Public for free and you can just start playing around and kind of seeing what you, what you can do. Um, so there's not really any barrier of entry, really. So free download, get started and see what you can achieve. Okay, so before we move on, I do quickly need to ask you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, Give the video a like if you are finding it useful. And again, when you get to the end of this video, some more of my videos will be linked below, um, which again, I think you will find useful. So let's get straight back to the video. Okay, so the next thing I will say is learn how to code. So obviously that is a lot easier said than done. Now, the two most popular languages that tend to be used within football data analytics and all the visuals that you see are Python and R. So these are two different coding languages, so it will take some skill to actually learn about them in the first place. Um, But, you know, like I say, most of the stuff you will see on Twitter is produced by using either of these languages. During the chat that I had with Liam, he did mention both of these. He says that he you know, uses Python a little bit more, but he actually recommends if you are getting started, there might be more online resources available for R actually. Um, so maybe check that one out as an alternative. Depending on what kind of learner you are, you might actually want to take a course. So there are online courses available that kind of specialize in Python and R. So, um, you know, you can kind of go away, spend some time and try and self, you know, learn yourself. Um, But, you know, if you are kind of one of them people that kind of learns better with a structured kind of um, curriculum or or course, then there are courses available. So, you know, that's at your disposal. You've also got, there's loads of YouTube channels, which I've been browsing earlier, actually, in terms of how to use these different languages to create specific visualizations. So whether that be a shot map, um, scatter graphs and stuff like that. So you can do that. And there's the tutorial videos. And again, they're on YouTube, so they are free. Um, and you can always obviously leave a comment under those guys' videos as well to kind of ask questions um, if you're unsure about anything that they've put in the video. One thing I will say on this is it will be a lot of trial and error, so don't be afraid to fail. So do some work. Obviously, there will be some mistakes because that's natural. Um, But then I think as you kind of get used to it, you'll start to rectify those mistakes as you kind of get a better understanding of the different languages that you are using. One thing that did stick with me from my conversation with Liam was he actually said that, you know, when he was kind of browsing Twitter before he started his own account was... The fact that he was looking up to these people that were posting these cool visuals and just basically thought, well, if they can do it, why can't I? And I think that's a great kind of uh, mentality to go with. So I think from that, I think for me, the most important thing is if you are looking to do data analytics is simply just to get started. We spoke about the Twitter community loads before. And I think in terms of that playing a part in your development, I think that's really, really important. So share your work online again. When you first start your work, you might, you know, you might think your work is not very good, but that's fine, you know, get it out there, get some feedback, maybe ask some questions to somebody that's doing something similar um, and learn as much as you can from these different people. Ultimately, you've got to learn from your mistakes. So like I say, you're not going to be perfect when you start out. Um, but I think even the people that you look at now, you know, if you go on the, on the Twitter community and see some of the cool visualizations by the people with loads and loads of followers, they started off at a basic, basic level. So you know, you've got to be realistic with the fact that, yeah, you might take some time to get there, but you've got to start, otherwise you will never get there. Okay, so that's all for this video. So thanks very much for watching. Please do check out my other videos linked in the description below and go ahead and get started on your data analytics journey. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments, but also leave a comment if you have any cool resources that you want to share with anybody else that is watching this video. Good luck and have a great day.